Kitty hop. Kitty hop. Kitty hop. Let's, let's go. go. Let's ride in the snow. <laughs> that it's Parson Brown. He'll say, Are you married? We'll, we'll say, say No, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire. To face, face unafraid the plans that we made. Walk the fans in. that we made. Fans that we made? We made yes. fans? Yes. Not Imagine after this fans. song. Fanda baby. <laughs> A 54 convertible. I'll do. <laughs> I can hit all of Mariah Carey's notes. Is It's pretty rapey. <laughs> <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Wow. Yeah. That was direct that and a little bit insulting. That's exactly how I meant it. It is Christmas. Uh, where we are. Where is it? Is, it, is Christmas just The a- Carmudgeon Show. It's a state of mind. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. On The Carmudgeon Show, presented by Jason hyphen Camisa <laughs> and Derek Tam Damn Scott, hyphen Santa. Uh, part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Um, this episode is about tires. Tires. Not because cold. we're tired. Yes, because we're tired. Well, you with that pug sweatshirt on, um, you uh, started the puns. So uh, oh, yes. we are tired and something has just fallen. Yes. Well, we'd better you just shit yourself. <laughs> Christmas, Derek dropped a turd. Christmas Eve can be hard on the digestive system. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm leaving. Didn't, uh, b- uh, wait a minute. There's something else that we missed. Something about the uh, the Haggerty Drivers Club um, magazine. S- support us by joining the Haggerty Drivers Club, which has a magazine. <laughs> it's the last one of the years. I knew if I did a bad enough job, you'd this have to This episode intervene. of the Carmudgeon Show is brought to you by the Haggerty Drivers Club. Please consider joining the Haggerty Drivers Club to help support this idiot by these remembering idiots. these idiots. By remembering that the Haggerty Drivers Club includes free, unlimited, guaranteed flatbed roadside assistance for all of your classic cars, um, plus an award-winning magazine, uh, discounts on your favorite car stuff, and a whole bunch of other shit. Valuation tool. And, oh, end. God. This episode of The Carmudgeon Show is brought to you by the Valentine One Radar Locator. Find radar before it finds you. Get more information at bit.ly slash valentine1 underscore haggerty. That's https colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly slash capital V-A-L-E-N-T-I-N-U number one underscore capital H-A-G-E-R-T-Y. Is that an MG midget or an MGB? I don't know. Tonight, I drive a Subaru. Jason wears a hat. And Derek claps. And Jake focuses. Oh, we already clapped. Oh, God, Sorry. Are we, are we, uh, we threw on Jake under the bus for the focus issue in the last couple episodes? What was that? What, what did you call it? There was like in sort of blurry vision. Sort of vision. That yes. was the funniest thing in the world. Like it was, I saw the thing and I'm like, oh no, the fo- the camera's focused on the TV instead of us and then whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then Jake Solve was like flashing in, now in sort of blurry vision. I laughed. I'm like, okay, like this is an imperfect product. We, we are imperfect to- people. And you want me to light this candle uh, in honor of? In the holidays? Okay, this is the in honor of the focus. vintage leather scented candle from the Haggerty shop. I, I am wearing a this sweater from the Haggerty shop. I don't I know why they sent it to me. Was it ba bah hum pug? Yeah, it has a pug. It's my ugly Christmas sweater. It's like Stewie. What episode was that? The Alpha SC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stewie. where Stewie was I launched into orbit. <laughs> okay, I'm lighting this candle. We are in a Haggerty property that is insured by Haggerty. So should this thing torch the fucking building, the <laughs> rover's outside, we're good. We're good. Can't blame it on the rover. Can't blame it on the rover. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Oh, yes. Happy 25th of this. Happy Boxing Day tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Is this candle going, going out? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is that time of the year. 
whether we'll have you to celebrate. call roadside assistance for the candle. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy this product, don't forget that Haggerty provides unlimited roadside assistance, guaranteed flatbed for your candle. Yes. Um, we are definitely in a festive mood. And by that, I mean, I think you had alcohol for lunch. Yes, I had the old liquid lunch <laughs> in the style of... Um, Patsy Stone. Yes. From Abfab or who else was a raging alcoholic? Uh, the Kelly Johnson, the guy who designed the SR-71. I think he did his best work before lunch. RE-71? No, the uh, Lockheed SR-71, the, oh. the supersonic spy plane. Okay, because I would like to transition to RE-71, RSs. It's a um, tire. Oh, I thought you were transitioning <laughs> to a tire. <laughs> we're Changing your pronouns? No. <laughs> We are not allowed to have this discussion on a podcast. Uh, uh, you know that LinkedIn automatically added a he, him, or what, you know, your pronoun oh, no. selection. And it added he, him to mine. And I'm like, I just, like, fine, sure, whatever. And then it occurred to me that I should change it to naturally aspirated. <laughs> and so it says, it says like Jason could be so naturally aspirated. It just makes me laugh. And I, I mean, no offense to anyone about it. Did it allow you to do that? It did. Yeah. Oh, you can change wow. your pronoun to whatever you want. And it just kind of made me laugh. And I'm like, I really genuinely hope well, you'd that better I'm not, not have any anymore. work done. Then you won't be naturally aspirated anymore. Forced inducted. I don't know. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, that awkward transition aside, I love how you throw out the number 71 because that's important. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I did the lemons race that we have mentioned now twice in two previous episodes. Um, and we finished overall third place. Uh, the team is the team captains, Bill Congratulations. Arnold. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we actually had two cars. One finished 52nd because it didn't actually finish. Um, but to most of the rest of the field, also didn't. didn't yeah, so. out of 140-ish cars that started, I was nuts. Um, I can chaos. I have to put this candle out. It's there's too much. The, the oh god, table's on fire. There's far too much air blowing from the heater right in my face, and this I smell. It's like I have my head in a, a 70s Recaro. It's great, but like a little too much um, because of the heater. Uh, so anyway, so we did this race. Team captain is uh, my hero, St. William, as I call him, Bill Arnold. Um, you don't call him St. Billiam? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he is a saint because he puts up with everyone's bullshit and he just wants to help the world. He's also a three-time winner of Target Newfoundland and owns a BMW shop here. Um, great guy all around. And uh, so we, the car that we were in was our E36, um, which is mildly quick and uh so it was and bill slightly prepared it actually has just got shitty shocks and springs i mean it's just nothing special but bill just knows how to set up a car um and so it was me bill and randy popst who drove uh, in that car and we we finished third overall we were in first at one point for quite a while we absolutely would have done better had we not gotten hit really hard by a miata um that spun into the side of the car <laughs> then i got black flag for going off because we had a braking issue um and i was driving like an asshole and then we got, we had two overheats that we, the car was going through a little bit of coolant. So, and we didn't know until it started getting hot. Mm. Um, but third overall is pretty good. Um, and this was interesting because Bridgestone, I've, I talked to Bridgestone a while back about the RE71 RS, which is their new, that replaces the RE71R, which is named after my favorite tire of all time, which is the RE71, which was 20 years ago, um, which used to let me outgrip everyone. And my favorite part of this tire is it didn't make a sound at the limit. So I used to be able to like do burnouts in the Scirocco and slide around people and do all kinds of terrible shit in that car and get away with it because there was no horrible squealing. Um, and uh, is this the tire that was OE on Lotus products? Mm. I think it was on the Elise. No, 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 no. This was earlier than that. Mm. This is probably maybe not earlier than that. Elise was Yokohama. There is there were two tires, uh, two Yokos on the Elise. It, there was a. Oh God, there was a 08 and then an 07. Mm. Ad, Advan, mm. AD07 and A something 08. And one of them was an R compound that you got with Sport Pack in the 195 fronts and one was the- 175. Yeah, 175. 
Wow. Blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway, R71 was a great tire back in the day. And so now they have an R71R that I'm pretty sure that I had on my one of my cars. And now there's an RS, which I was told is a big improvement. And so I was curious to test it out. Uh, it is available in the Lotus' size. So I kind of was tempted. But I said, you know what? If you guys are interested in sponsoring the race team, send a couple tires to Bill. Right. And let's, we'll just we'll couple put them. Just two. 16. 16. Couple I 16. said a couple. Bill was like, you know, they reached out and they're like, how many tires and where can we sell them? He was like, 16. Here's my address. I was like, oh. And they did. Huh. Um, so each car, because we ran two by cars. Bridgestone. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, the mail got fucked up and we didn't. They had sent all kinds of banners, you know, as sponsorship stuff does. And yeah, you know, so you could indicate your affinity and enthusiasm. And they didn't arrive. Oh, so, so you ran the cars without. I tried. I went to the gift shop at Sonoma Raceway and I'm like, do you guys have anything that says Sonoma, uh, that says Bridgestone on it? I will buy it. And they didn't. So, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so they're 200 tread wear tires and they, which is the minimum requirement. And we were a little bit worried about wear because the other tires that we've run in the past and I don't, there's a list of them all tend to wear a little bit better. And wear is important on an endurance race because this was a total of 13 and a half, I think, hours of racing, something like that. Um, it's called the 24 hours of lemons, but it's no longer 24 hours and it's certainly not in the winter. So we basically race as, you know, start early and then finish at sunset. Um, and we're a little bit concerned about wear. So we had, but we had two sets going in and it was comical. Like this car is set up well and it's fast and it kind of does everything really well. So it's easy to, if you're an idiot and I'm raising my hand for those people watching, listening on podcast, um, you can really have a lot of fun. I passed 1300 cars. <laughs> <the weekend. laughs> and, and it was like, it wasn't just like a normal little pass. There were, I will find a clip because we do have a GoPro on the car. Of like, <laughs> you pass, like you head into a corner and you and got it's like five wide going in and you're coming up on a, a bolus of cars that's five wide and two deep. And you go around all of them. And yeah. it's like, you go around two of them and then you flick it in and then you go around the, on the inside of two, on the outside of one, back on the inside. Like you're just passing them like they're not even trying. And there were so many times during the weekend where I was like, there's no way these poor people are trying. Like, what are they doing? And I realized that the car in front of me, like, is coming into brake. I'm like, they're not using any of their brake. Oh, that's lockup. <laughs> like, it's just the difference between moderately okay tires and a shitbox yeah. and really good tires. Yeah. Um, and this wound up being a, a really good choice of a tire for that weekend because it rained and then it didn't rain and then it rained and then it didn't rain. And the, the wet grip was outrageous mm. like genuinely this isn't fair to everyone else. i don't understand how modern tires do this like i actually that same weekend i was doing a rally and i it was similarly moist because we were in the same part of the world at the same time and just hauling ass in the rain at a speed that you don't think the car should grip and you're just like at any moment the car's going to launch and if, at some point you're just like okay the car has mm. genuine grip in the moist like the i don't know it's on yeah. And four S's, it, of and four S's. Okay, yeah. but four S's. As much as I love them, in the wet they're fantastic. But when they break away, they break away pretty abruptly. Mm -hmm. um, and I only know this from from the e golf. You get sort of a. Uh, I, I'm going to say the these are four S's. We're calling them right trade Michelin Pilot Sport four S is mm -hmm. the best all around performance tire in the world. Um, and it, the grip is in genuinely nuts. Um, and in the dry, when they break away, they're they're like an all season. They're so wonderful. In the wet, they're a little bit skittish. They'll sort of, sort of mm -hmm. skip over the surface. These RSs didn't. And that mm -hmm. was the craziest thing. And when you're dealing with 13 hours of racing, right, you can push to the limit, but I can't wreck the car. I, first of all, it's not mine to wreck. Um, and I don't want to let the whole team down. There are a bunch of other people who want to drive these cars and I don't want it to get hurt or worse hurt anyone else you can fucking do the stupidest shit and just come in and you're like, eh, a little sideways here, a little sideways there. It doesn't, it broke, they broke away like winter tires, huh. which is insane. I don't know how this works. So uh, hats off to Bridgestone for the R71 RS because 
I mean, we went through a lot of tread. Do they make um, the Blizzak as well? Yeah. Huh. Oh, I so was, I do have Bridgestones. I was always a Bridgestone boy. Actually, before I discovered, I don't know if it's before I discovered Michelin or before the latest generation of Michelins just sort of leapt. The first 20. Michelin I remember really doing that was the Pilot Super Sport. Mm-hmm. When those tires came out, I was just like, holy shit, that's the way to go. That's different. Yeah. I was on a launch for that tire. I'm sorry if you're watching. I'm turning the heat down because I turned it up way too high because it was freezing in here. As it Now is you're wintry. getting cooked in your um, wintry mix. Yeah, when my wintry mix of of uh, leather. Um, I went on the, on the press launch for PSS, which was Pilot Sport 3. So Pi- Pilot Sport 2 came out. And the Pilot, Pilot Sport was always a good tire. I had them back in the day on my 911. Which one was the Pilot Super Sport? P- it's technically PS3. So it was Pilot Sport, yes, Pilot okay. Sport 2, mm-hmm. Pilot Super Sport, and then PS4, and now PS5. Um, and uh, I used to have the the one thing, that, I was a Bridgestone boy, so I had S002s two? on the 911 back in the day. SO2s. Um, uh, SO2s. No. Yes, SO2 poles, right? There was a SO1 pole position, SO2s, yeah. Um, and the Bridgestones were great, but they would wear pretty quickly on the track. And at some point I needed, um, I needed tires for a track day and they just weren't available. And the only thing that was available was the, the, the pilot sports, which were the OE fitment on the car. And I thought, Oh my God, they're twice the price. They actually lasted four times longer. Mm. And so even though they didn't have as much sidewall stiffness, so the steering was sort of a, a little bit diminished, they were well worth the two times the price. Um, and that was my first intro but to them. And PS2 came out, was amazing. PS3, which is Pilot Super Sport, I went on the launch of, they had a launch in Dubai for this tire. Wasn't that tire originally designed? I think it was for the 599 GTO was the first car that received PSS. that as an OE fitment, I think, if I remember correctly. Does that remember. timeline stack correctly? Was your- yeah. Yeah, it was about the about same time. Um, I went on the GTO launch also. That was really good. Sounded great. Um the launch sounded great. <laughs> the car sounded even better. The, um, yeah, and then PS4 just changed the world because PS4 was now uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2 levels of grip or near as ma- makes no difference in the real world. Even in low temperatures yeah. and in the wet. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Michelin All Season line, which is PSAS. So Pilot All Sport, is it Pilot Sport All Season? Yeah. I, think it's, I don't know. PSAS 4 now. Yes. Uh, I have all season fours on the minivan mm-hmm. and I have all season three plus, which was a pre- immediate predecessor on the Lotus, which is a strange choice, but um, the way that car breaks away is very sudden. And I like- So you wanted a more progressive departure. And honestly, the grip level provided the, by those, despite being all seasons is like immense. It is, it outgrips the original factory Yokos. So I had the non R compound Yokos. Mm-hmm. 8008 was the- the one and I have AD007 or something, but um, yeah, the it, those all seasons outgrip the the original summer near our compound tires um, and then break away so beautifully that um, I love them. It helps dull the mm-hmm. departure suddenness of the departure of an otherwise slightly yep. sketchy car. But this sort of got me thinking: we should do a whole episode on tires because there's only one thing that touches the ground. You're looking around like you're. Very confused. What's looking that? for the thing that touches the ground? Is it the tires? It's a tire. Ah, yeah. okay. okay. Um, yeah, I'm sure this happens to you a lot. People ask advice on tires, and my first piece of advice is don't be cheap. Oh, mine is Michelin's. <laughs> I think we're saying the same thing. <laughs> Michelin's are almost always the most expensive. It's choice. also it's interesting to use it as, but I think the the four S's are actually quite reasonably priced for what they are. Like they cost less than they make. They simultaneously continue to make the. I don't know. Is it the PS2 that they still make? They make a lot of different. Yeah, the PS2 is still made, and it's more expensive than the 4S. And the 4S is a better tire. And yeah. the only time to buy the PS2 is when they don't make the 4S in the size you need. Yeah, I mean PS2. I don't. I I remember liking. I don't remember loving. Um, PSS was a, a, as you said, a big step up. And then there's there is a Pilot Sport 4 and and a 4S. Uh, I don't have too much experience with the four, um, mm-hmm. even though that's our OE fitment. That tends to be OE fitment on things like um, BMW stuff. We'll use PS4, and I feel like that's the optional tire now on GR86, maybe? 
something hot hatchy or something hot that I drove recently. It was PS4 and I thought, why not S? I want more S. Um, but uh, yeah, the advice is go buy the best tire that meets your requirements and matches your driving style. Um, but people really forget that at the end of the day, you can have the best car in the world with the worst tires on it and it's going to be a shit pile. It's always an interesting reference point also when you're looking at a used car and you feel like it has Michelins and you're like, that's oh, going to be a good car. Done. Right? How weird is that? So is that just the two of us that feel that way? Or? I've definitely come across other people. When you see a, when you're looking at, is considering buying a used car, that the type of tires that the owner has chosen to put on it is always indicative yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think any car that has Michelins on it will automatically PPI pass. pretty decently. I don't, I don't, yeah, you're not going to spend the money, you, you know, you're not going to buy the the maybe least obvious choice if, if you don't care about the car. Yes. Um, yeah. And what gets me are the people who, I'm sorry to be this way now, we're all celebratory and everyone's nice right now. It's about to change. It's the people who are like, I spent all the money and I put the Pirellis on it. Mm. Well, because they're Italian and there's a Pirelli banner at the Formula One track or something like that. That's the power of to, marketing. Are we going to have to talk about Pirellis now? Uh, it's up to you. I, I mean, I think it might chance it costs us a chance for sponsorship ever. But uh, on um, motorcycles, they are the best tires in the world. Really? Yes. Now, it's how is it that they're so terrible on cars? Oops, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, truly I have don't know. never met a Pirelli that I liked. I like the old ones. Oh, like 40 years ago? Yeah, like CN36s and CN12s. Because they look cool. Yes. Yes. Is to that me, that's a very important part for an old car, right? You have an entirely different set of criteria for an old car. Although, uh, it depends what it is. And also, the, the Michelin XWX was always such an iconic tire uh, that so was... Standard fitment to a bunch of Italian exotics plus the Mercedes 450 SEL 6.9, which right. I always enjoyed. <laughs> it's like Maserati Bora and Ferrari yeah. Daytona and 6. the 6.9. Yeah. Um, but the CN tires looked, they looked so cool. Yes. They have that sort of octagonal. What The CN 36s uh, do have the, the angled, herringbone. Yeah, herringbone rectangle uh, blocks. Yeah. I have those on my Citroën, even though it's a French car and it should have Michelins, but they Michelins cost twice as much. <laughs> and I Safe. figured I was not going to be, uh, I don't know, grip maxing the Citroen. You know, it's funny when I bought the Ferrari from you, it had CompTIA's on it. Yes, um, BF Goodrich's. Yeah, and they were just timing out and it, it was time. So I was looking at Michelin XWX's mm -hmm. and Pirelli, the Pirelli CN 36's. Mm -hmm. And the XWX's were four times the price, I think it was. At the <laughs> These time. are now made not by Michelin anymore, by the way. They're made by Coker. Coker. And I thought, okay, what I learned very cursory research was that they're effectively the original, the original tire in a continuation by Coker. Um, whereas the Pirelli stuff was re-engineered with modern construction methods, but kept the same and designs and compounds. And so I was heavily leaning towards the Pirelli. And then I found the Fredestein Sprint, Sprint Classic. Classics. And I've been yelled at a couple of times from people that say that those look like period snow tires. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care what they look like because they were inexpensive and they're fantastic. Yeah. I cannot believe the grip that that Ferrari has yeah. and then how beautifully it breaks away when you're sliding. Yeah. Like, I uh, I would always put them on, when I was flipping 912s, I'd always put them on 912s because they had the right blend of goodness, price, and look. Fred Designs. Yeah, the Sprint Classics. Huh. And I had them on my Julieta as well. Huh, okay. Fred Stein has been the big surprise, and that's kind of where I, I'll, I want us to get there because this is a tire company that no one knows. Certainly not in North America. No, they're huge in Europe. I yeah. mean, so it's a Dutch Dutch company, uh, which we Fred Stein mm -hmm. uh, would be the proper pronunciation, probably, but. Um, you can call it Vredestein or Fredontestern or no. Um, and they have, so they popped on the scene for, uh, to my attention with Sprint Classics um, yeah, on the Ferrari. And then I was talking to a bunch of different tire companies when we did the E30 M3 versus 2.316 race. Um, so this was part of an Icons episode on M3. And I wanted the Mercedes 190E and the, the 2316 and the E30 M3 BMW came out just far enough apart from each other, 86 in the US versus 88, that there was a different generation of tire. Um, mm. Pirelli had come up with, and or Conti or Pirelli had come up with all new tires in that in that in those intervening two years. 
And so I, what I wanted was Randy Post to set a lap time on both of the cars and discuss them, but have them be on the same rubber. And Fredestein made a tire called the Sprint Plus. Plus, that was in the stock 205, 55, 15 size. Uh, and I contacted Fredstein. I said, can you do me a favor? Send me this. This is for testing and whatever. Um, they were fantastic. Yeah, that's and, what I have on my Cosworth now. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, that's right. We did. Because you bought it in Europe where they probably are used to seeing that. I don't think that tire is available anymore in the US. Oh, really? Um, something tells me that there was, the last time I looked on Tire Rack, it wasn't. Um but it was inexpensive. It did so well on the abusive track day. I mean, well, I'll throw a video of, of Randy doing donuts in my 2316. And the tires didn't care. I mean, he did long, hard, abusive donuts. Um, and we tracked the cars all day. Um, we wound up flat spotting the set on the Mercedes because my ABS gave out <laughs> during filming. Uh, it was a wheel speed sensor. And uh, and then so when Fred Assign called them, they were like, hey, what do you think? And I'm like, I loved them, but I can't drive this car because, you know, the, the octagonal uh, tires, they sent me another set. And I'm, they're fabulous. The they're Sprint so pluses. good, yeah. Um, and then, so, I mean, it's, it's very interesting that I've gone from a Bridgestone boy always to... I've not, so I found this whole Michelin thing and it would be my dream to have Michelins on every car that I own. Um, however, Michelin doesn't make tires in a lot of the smaller enthusiast sizes that we want. Yeah, I mean, 15s, your choices are limited. The smallest size the 4S comes in is 18 or maybe 17. Uh, and so if you're running a car from the 90s that is on 16s or 15s or, or 14s or 13s, 14s if you're from the 70s, then... Uh, yeah, you don't have a lot of choices. Lot of you choice. can do the Coker XWXs, which certainly look right. I they grip well. That's what's on the Mira, actually. Okay, they grip really well. Yeah. Either that or it's just that car is fundamentally amazing. When hello, it's a fucking Mira. double wishbones. Yeah. Um, but I wound up going. I've had like. 50 million sets of Yokohama S drives, for example. Yeah, because if you're 15 inch requirement, there's like two or three yeah. sizes, and they were replaced with tires. Yokohama Fleva. Which I'm sorry, whoever came up with that name, F L E V A, like whoever came up with that name needs to be shot. And then uh, I was talking to a guy who worked for Yokohama, and he's like, "Yeah, they're marginally better than S drives, but I've never had a set of S drives that was round. Um, every car I have with them, they grip well, they're wonderful that. tires, but it's yeah. I mean, at the right speed, you might." <laughs> Have a moment. Enter orbit. <laughs> no, I'm thinking have an orgasm from all the vibration. It's the vibration. I mean, I'm oh. it's like my E30 wagons on S drive still, and they're they're about bald, and I'm I'm happy about it because the it, the car is like driving. So, what do you do? Sprint pluses? If they're available, I would do sprint pluses. Um, I would. I've had really good luck with Dunlop stuff. So the Z2 really? and Z3 stars, Z2 star spec and Z3s have been good. They wear quickly. Um, but they're grippy as all hell. I have Z3s on Beatrice and Z3s on the Scirocco right now. Um, I don't think they're as aggressive as the RE71s preview that I previously had. Um, RE71Rs. Um, but there are plenty of choices. I won't do business with Hancock. Is it Hancock? Yeah, Hancock. Because they wouldn't warranty a set of tires that were eight months old and were cracked radially the whole, entire way around. Um, and they're like, well, it's obviously a manufacturing defect, but uh, best we can do is give you um, a, a discount, uh, a set of four uh, tires at our discounted price. And the discounted price that they would give me the set of four for was greater than Tire Rack was selling them for. Huh. And I'm like, come on. This is uh, like these cars, these tires have no miles on them. It's clearly a manufacturing defect. It was three of them out of the four. Uh, and they're like, yeah, no, we can, we can great give you this great deal. And I'm like, fuck you. Um, so Hankook is out. Hmm. Um, Were the tires any good? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, that's, that's one of the, I think we run Ventus, Hankook Ventus car uh, as one of some of the alternate tires in the race car. And I, I don't know. Um, some of the Kumo stuff has been great lately. I just don't have. The Rover much. has Kumos. Yes. Solus. Solus Kumho? Is that what you called it? No, that's what it says on the I tire. Know, I know. It's a very awkward name. <laughs> You're going to get us in trouble on it's this. It's just a collection of letters. Um, 
Yeah, it's a, a slightly unfortunate. Um, but I, I'm in this tire dilemma right now before we get to the like sci- science-y stuff behind tires. Because as you know, I have Pilot Sport 4S's on the e-Golf, mm-hmm. which has decimated range. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really- And a variety of roads too, I'm sure. Oh my God, they're so good. That car, I mean, we've talked about it before. 1.07 G on the skid pad. It's obscene. It, it's so much grip. And they're great in the rain. They're great in the dry. They're great everywhere. I love these tires. However, um, I also went to 18s. And when I did this uh, back in the day, this is now three years ago, um, I got two identical sets of 18-inch Volkswagen Seren wheels, which are Mark 6 wheel. Um, so OE GTI. GTI Audubon wheel. And I put one set of Pilot Sport 4Ss on one of them and at one set of Pilot Sport All Season 3 Pluses on the other. Um, and I, I got three identical e-golfs. One of them was fully stock. They all had the same mileage on it, same everything. One was fully stock on the Bridgestone Ecopia EP422s. The other one had the All Seasons and the third one had the PS4S. And we did exactly the same, with the same amount of mass in each car. So two people plus ballast to equal the mass out. All three cars were cha- charged on the same charger at the same time at the same place. Um, left and did the same route together. Uh, with the same climate control settings. I went crazy on this and we really did keep it as even as possible. And the result was both Michelins lost exactly nine, the same amount of range, which was 19%. Uh, and this was- Of 126 miles. 125, yeah. yeah. So, um, it was, and the problem there was that, with that test was that it was mostly, we drove like Christians the whole time. It was just, you know, we also kept passing each other. It was a, it was a whole- thing but 19 percent of mostly slow driving in the faster type driving that i do i'm seeing a more like 40 percent hit um which is huge and so is that arrow or is that rolling resistance yes probably a combination of arrow both well hold on actually friend of mine one of the guys who one of the people who participated in that uh was uh, uh that test was um my friend colin and his wife shannon and shannon's car she is the champ she's been averaging so the car's rated at 125 miles. I was averaging 140 on the stock tires. So these e-golfs do pretty well. And then uh, just like my old one, which was an 83-mile car and I averaged 97. So it's overperforming. Everything's great. She's averaging like 160 to 170 a charge because she's mostly low speed in city and she drives like a reasonable person, clearly. Um, and they just replaced the factory size with all-season fours thinking, oh, it's the same 205, 55, 16, all season four. They got the same 40% hit. 40. 40. 35. I think theirs was 35%. And they were like, something broke on the e-golf. Swapped factory tires back on, boom, fine. And that's just the wheel, just the tires. Yes, yeah, not the Kept wheels, the wheels, right, because the arrow of the, those factory um, wheels is... Yeah, so Colin wound up throwing, hi Colin, if you're listening, <laughs> threw, wound up throwing those uh, all season fours on his old 911 because it's the right size for that car. He absolutely loves them. Bought another set of Bridgestone Ecopia EP422s and boom, right back to 160 miles of range. Mm. So to me, the biggest surprise is how enormous the impact of rolling resistance can be. Like 40% yeah. for two, two different tires of the same size. That's shocking. Shocking. Is that an electric vehicle joke with your bah hum pug pug yes What's this thing on obviously um so i'm gonna try to what i so my my ps4s is are wearing huh, um weird yeah they have fourteen thousand miles on them which is unbelievable because let's say the original ep422s the bridgestones were okay they weren't bad um they have a 540 treadwear rating on them mm-hmm. and all four of them i rotated them like six times all four of them were bald at 12,500 miles, like zero tread left uh, when I returned that car on the lease. This car, I now have the PS4S, is, they have a 200 tread wear. So 200? 200 or 240? Mm. Oh, I think it's a little higher than 200. 280, whatever it is, substantially lower than the 540 right, on the Bridgestone. So I, would, I was kind of worried these tires were going to be bald in 6,000 miles, and it's been 14,000. That's the other still. thing about 4S is that when they came out, and I was like, how is this tire? It's like the tire that violates physics because there's so much good performance mm-hmm. in both dry and wet and cold temperatures, and they don't wear fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, what the hell? Because yep. I mean, I, re- I remember as a kid, my dad would complain about how he would get like maybe ten thousand miles out of a set of tires, like maybe. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, it's mostly me. 
I mean, you drive, it depends on how you drive, but I drive like a good. Yeah, so to get 14,000. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And one of them is really good because one, I, the one thing about this these tires, maybe it's just the e-golf, maybe it's just where I'm going, maybe it's the Michelins. I get more flats than I've ever, I mean, I've never had so many. From foreign object debris? From or? foreign object debris. I, it's unbelievable. I think I've had eight flat tires on that car um, in 14,000 miles. And you don't have a spare. And there's no spare. Um, but the, so one of them is below wear bars Two are maybe three thirty seconds. And one of them is probably seven thirty seconds. So this is rainy season here. When, when it rains, it pours in the Bay area, we get a lot of rain. And so I started thinking maybe I should put the factory 16s back on the car to get some of my range back. And then I can have a winter set of tires for this winter. And I'll be able to use his PS4 S's for one more summer season before I have to replace all four of them. And so I started looking at EP422s again. And there are three different grades of them. Some is one's VW spec, one is somebody else's spec, whatever. Um, and then I found that the European Union has now mandated rolling resistance grading for all the tires. Oh, uh, just like sticker. tread wear and mm -hmm. temperature yep. and whatever. What is the third one? Traction so tread wear temperature is, is uh, wet performance and, oh my God, we're doing a whole thing on, it's AA. So like if uh, yeah, it's, it's wet and heat. Yeah, temperature. That's Jesus. what I said. Yeah, temperature and 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 water, hydroplaning resistance. But we'll get into that in a second. So they're they're giving a A through either E or D or F um, grade on rolling resistance, with A being the best. A being the best. Um, I think the PS four S's are like a D or an E, um, which that would explain. Would confirm you yeah. would confirm through your experimental yep. testing. Um, but I started to do research on like the Bridgestones are B. And I thought, okay, the factory, factory tires. EP422s. I'm like, let, let me just go look at other eco-focused tires in the in that original size. Wouldn't you know, two Fredesigns pop up. One is their high track all season, which is a US only all season. And one is their quad track, which looks like an old Eagle F1 with these like radial yeah, yeah. cool things. I have those on the cabbie, the cabriolet, and I like them. So I'm like, okay, let me look at this. Those two tires decimated the entire rest of the the grand touring performance class on tire X testing i mean in terms of all, all around performance everything oh. i mean one of them i don't remember which one it was was like what we like about it everything we wish other tires would be this good and i'm from like, fredestein what, what the fuck that what I, we're such i'm such a michelin fan and like bridgestone boy and dunlop I like all these other different where where the hell have we been that fredestein gets a tire that makes tire X say that so, I mean, in our experience with Sprint Classics and the Sprint Plus. And two the other quad tracks with, that are on the cabbie. I think, so I'm going to put, I'm going to probably put quad tracks on the, because they're, they're on the A, golf. they're A rated. So maybe I'll get even more range. Um, 250. <laughs> 7 million miles out of a double A battery. Um, yeah, I just look, I, this episode should be called, where the fuck did Fredestein come from? <laughs> I mean, we should have done some research if we really want to answer that question, but it seems to be Holland. <laughs> I'm going to leave now. Be right. nice to me. It's Christmas. Okay. Um, so let's talk about tires. We just did. No. I mean, I think there's probably some usable information that we could give to other people rather than me rattling off about tires. Um, I think there's a lot of lack of understanding about tire sizes and grading and things like that. And I think we should just take this time to explain okay. that. So your car's tires have a size. What Whoa. Is it, what is it Amazing. Mean? Yeah, like your shoe. What does it mean? Uh, the first number is width. In. Millimeters. Okay, so a 205. 205 millimeters. I.e. 20.5 centimeters. And that is the tread width, effectively. Mm -hmm. Okay, next number. It's aspect ratio. Which means? It's a percentage of the width. Which... It's the height of the sidewall. Yes. So a 205.60, for example. Is the sidewall height is 60% of the width of the tire. Of the tire, right. Um, and then the 16, the last the number. the diameter of the tire and wheel, wheel in inches. Which is annoying that the first. And there's, there'll be an R between those last two numbers if it's a radial, radial tire. Which everything is at this point. Almost, yeah. And in, then there'll be in another our world. Yours, maybe not, because, you know, yes. I need bias ply tires for maximum death risk. <laughs> uh, and then there'll be like a letter before the R, which is the uh, speed rating, like ZR. Sometimes, yes. Or H. Yeah. R. Okay. So a 255 50 18 
is it's annoying that the 255 is measured in millimeters, i.e. Mm-hmm. metric. And the second number is percentage. And the third, and the third number, number is inches, inches, which is dumb. Yes. Um, and these conventions are global. Yeah. Unless you're doing a metric wheel, which was done briefly by Michelin in the, the 1980s. F- the with the TRX. Uh, and those, they came in 390 millimeter diameter and 420 right. millimeter diameter. Which we don't know what that means because we're American. 390 is like between 15 it. and 16. I think it's 15.6 inches or something like Divided that. Divided by 2.54. And yes. And then 420 will be taller still. Um, and so w- if you go to a wider tire, you need to reduce the aspect ratio or you're changing the overall diameter and the height of the car and the tire. Um, Correct. And that is So that's why you use the tirecalculator.com or whatever it is yeah. to enter your sizes and you get, so that if you're trying to plus size uh, your tires you would depending on how much you've increased the width you might increase the aspect or decrease. decrease the aspect ratio to keep the same outer diameter why is that important uh, so that your abs sensors and speedometer and odometer and gearing are all as close as possible to original yeah also suspension design remember that the distance between the center axle the center of the wheel uh, and the contact patch, i.e. the ground, um, is part of how the vehicle was tuned to begin with. And so if you vastly increase the overall diameter of your tire, you're increasing the lever arm and the and and all of the changing all of the geometry of your suspension. And I'm not So I'm putting thirty threes on an off rotor or anything. Oh, speaking of oversized tires, I bought a shitty new car with a salvage title and no paint. It sounds a lot like your Beatrice. But it's the same color. It's, it's not, also a straight six. No, it's a it's a it's a later one. It's a V six. It's an M one twelve. I'm leaving. <laughs> it was thirteen hundred dollars. You bought a. You spent thirteen hundred dollars on something with a V six. Yes. Says the man who's got a V six minivan. And anyway. you spent quite a bit more than thirteen hundred. You spent more my than my vagina 000. is not salvage title. <laughs> 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 yes, my van is named is your Gina. vagina matching numbers. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. My vagina's got all original paint. <laughs> <laughs> Have you metered it? <laughs> uh, right. So I bought a thirteen hundred dollar salvage title C two eighty in nineteen ninety nine, uh-huh. with no clear coat on it, uh, for similar reasons that you bought uh, Beatrice. Because you're stupid. Yes. Okay. Don't worry. I split it three ways. So actually, my share was only four hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty three cents. Okay. So for what and and why? Why? So when I originally posted that I had simply bought this car on um, on my Instagram story and people were like, why did you do that? Some people were like, it's beautiful. And they were just like very complimentary. And I was like, are you blind? <laughs> and then other people were like, why did you buy that shit heap? Especially with the V6 instead of the inline six. Because yeah. up until 97, they were available with inline sixes. The good twin cam 24 valve. Yeah. Uh, and I just said for reasons. And then, uh, you know, the next photo is a tech sticker on the car. Um, and we bought winter tires for it. Incidentally, one of my co-owners in this car is the person who also owns a third of the Rover SD1 Mm -hmm. with us. And this is how I found out about the new C30, uh, C280, because you (laughs) said to me, uh, you're going to have to buy us out on the Rover because (laughs) we spent all our money on some other foolish, irresponsible and inexpensive activity, which is Uh, is called rally cross, um, which you had never heard of. Uh, I have. You yeah, had? Yeah. Oh, you mm. acted surprised to see what we were doing. I was surprised that I didn't get a fucking invite. All uh, I know yeah. is everything is fine in my life and everything is wonderful and I'm having a great weekend until I get a video from you <laughs> rally crossing a fucking W202. And I was so jealous that I was sitting like working on my house like an imbecile while you were having so much fun. How dare you? So this was the result of us going on a rally while you were uh, at Lemons. And so this all hatched when those, the other two owners of the car were drunk uh, one night after we had finished rallying for the day. And they're like, we should go rally cross. And then they're like, let's go to Craigslist and set a maximum price of $3,000 and see what we can buy uh, to to rally cross. Uh, And so I was (laughs) like, yeah, I'm interested. (laughs) So, you know, we went and looked at this thing and bought it on a Wednesday and then put new tires on it on Friday. And then Saturday we were rally crossing. Uh, So rally cross (sighs) is um, 
It's a combination of rally and autocross is mm-hmm. probably where the name came from. If I had to guess where the name rally cross came from. It's muddy, dirty autocross, right? Yeah, Usually. it's it's a it's a non-paved course that is marked by cones with pointer cones, and if you hit a cone, you take a you add a second to your time. So that's like autocross, uh, but it's not paved, and uh, it is incredibly. I mean, it's more it's more expensive probably than autocross. How much does an autocross cost? Anywhere between here. I mean, it depends. Yeah, here. On How much is an autocross from SCCA? Oh, okay. I think the last one I did was hundred bucks. So it costs the same as an autocross. So it's ninety five dollars mm-hmm. to enter, plus an SCCA membership, uh, which you should have anyway if you're an enthusiast motorist. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a lot less expensive than a track day, and it's a until you break the car. No, crack it no, in half. Not even crack then. It, oil pan no, no, even, damage. Even then, it's not more expensive than a, than a track day because the whole my share of the car was four hundred and thirty three dollars plus ninety five dollars to entry. So it was plus tires. Plus tires. Plus the transmission pan that you probably smashed no, in. We didn't plus smash anything. Suspension. The car is in, per, is in the same condition in, in which it started. This is um, unbelievable. It's, I'm it's, so it's, it's really, really fun. I highly recommend anybody to try Rallycross. Yeah, I, I'm it, coming with you the next time. Yeah, you should. You should. We should buy another. Uh, I was just going to bring uh, the Rover. <laughs> oh, you, uh, no, the ground clearance is much too poor on that car. Uh, you'll you'll van? collapse. The ex- yeah, the van. My Vangina is a rally cross yeah, champion. champion. Yes, you actually suggested I take the e golf. I think the e golf would be perfect. The guy who was the fastest in our run group was driving an electric mini. Ugh. I mean, it makes sense. The, yeah, but I want rear wheel drive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was no other rear wheel drive cars besides ours, other than a an E thirty six three eighteen hatchback. Ooh. Which is the you know the multi link suspension? It has had tires that were placarded E thirty six hatch. Sorry, uh, semi trailing, trailing arm, arm instead yeah. of multi link, yeah. uh, and uh, it had tires that were placarded as for you know off road and comp- They were not, they're not DOT tires. Wow. Uh, so it, okay, so but you bought snows. We bought snows. We wanted to run in the stock class, and if you want to run in the stock, you need a DOT tire that's rated for highway use, and so you can't run a full competition. So that's the the best tire and a wind but a winter tire is the best for that mud sort of um, i mean you season? you would like run a ta ko2 which is like a mud sort of off-roading tire mm-hmm. but they were not available in the size that we needed which was like 205 you know i think we went up five percent on aspect mm-hmm. ratio so 205 you know 60 or 65 15s uh, oh and the ta ko2 or other similar mud tire was not available in that size Oh my god! It was god. kind of an inspired choice that car, honestly, because they are. Uh, it has a lot of suspension travel mm-hmm. and like good cushy suspension and expensively engineered suspension and lots of travel. It was, and the car was cheap. It was. It was. I mean, they thought we were insane because yeah, everybody right. else there was in like a you know there was a front wheel drive horde and a uh, an all wheel drive horde mm-hmm. and then there's the two rear wheel drive cars which were just luxury going, <laughs> go, luxuriously going sideways everywhere at a low rate of speed compared to the. Uh, Front wheel drive. So what were, what were the cars. front wheel drive cars over there? Uh, like Ford Focuses, some quite prepared. Ford Focuses, mm-hmm. there was a guy in like a Chevy Spark and the electric Mini and a CRX and there was a Mark 1 Scirocco and a Mark 1 GTI. I, I mean, I love how, especially in the Bay Area, there are no, there exist no Mark 1 Volkswagens and there's a Mark 1 Scirocco. Those things are like... Yeah, it was all prepared, heavily prepared. He was running in the, the modified front wheel drive class. Wow. Uh, and there was a Mark Ford Golf. I mean, anything that's mm-hmm. sort of there was a Chevy Sprint Turbo. How could I leave that out? How the three fu- cylinders? What? They ha- they were on their third one. They they just knew they learned their way how to to around a Chevy Sprint Turbo on the first car, and then uh, apparently not if they destroyed two of them. Already. No, Rallycross did that. That okay. that car I particularly enjoyed because it made a great deal of noise, uh-huh. and none of it was engine or tire noise. It was all like the hood <laughs> rattling and the bumper <laughs> vibrating and like weird noises from the suspension, and so you could hear this thing coming from quite far away. And all of the noise was not sort of ordinary car noise. Wow. Uh, so they were on their third one because they knew how to work on those things. Mm. And uh, that was pretty hilarious also. This is unbelievable. This means we've been in close contact with three Chevy Sprint Turbos. Yes, because the the two, uh, co- two of my co-founders, each of them have Sprint yeah. Turbos, one red and one white. That's so crazy. All right. So uh, I highly recommend the activity because it is cheap and an absolute barrel of laughs. laughs. Like at, after we finished, all three of us were like, I think this is not, I think, this is more fun than a track day, in my opinion. I think huh. it's more fun than a track day because you spend a lot of time uh, past the limit, almost exclusively past yeah. the limit. Well, Plus so do the, I in a race car. Yeah, a lot of most people in the track days don't do that, especially at fast tracks. Like, you know, you don't want to do that at a lot of places at 
Laguna, for example, or you don't want to do that at Sonoma because of, there's a lot of stuff to hit. I know you just spent an entire 13 hours doing that, but <sighs> most people, you know, it, it's a lot easier. It's a lot lower stakes to spend yeah. time past the limit because you're not ever going very fast. I think we locked it in first gear and left it in first gear for the entire run. Oh, cool. Um, and, you know, it obviously teaches you a lot about uh, managing that particular mm. car uh, past the limit. So I highly recommend it because it's so cheap and hilarious. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I guess the only downfall, uh, the only real, the only place where the lemons is so much better is I had, so we split the car three ways and I had four and a half, five hours of seat time for over a weekend. Yes. This is like an autocross where you get a, a handful of couple minute runs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this was a long course, so that was nice, but it was still, you know, the cumulative total of driving minutes is quite low. Yeah. Uh, so you spend an entire day, and if you're used to autocross, you'll be like, "Yeah, that's just the way it is." Yeah, Everybody's got to get their run in. But if you're used then again, to, you probably didn't leave exhausted. I averaged 160 beats per minute for two and a half hours on my stint, my heart mm -hmm. rate. I mean, I was so physically exhausted. Friend, my friend's like, "That's literally a half marathon." Yeah, I don't yeah. understand how you can run a stint that long because after like 20 or 30 minutes on the track, I'm like, "Okay, I'm, I need to I'm, discontinue." I, yeah, I was exhausted. I mean, I was really, I went home on Sunday and I dropped, I, you know, because Sunday's stint was a little bit less, I think my average heart rate was 143 or something, but it still is very, very physically demanding and it's a long time. That level of um, concentration is unmatched by any other activity that I can think of. Racing that hard, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean... I don't know. I, I could use some more cardio <laughs> at this point, but I was a little bit worried that I was going to be that guy who died in the car when my when my when I saw my heart rate. I was like, yeah, and you know, of course, Randy Popes was making fun of me, but I beat Randy. Don't tell anyone, but my fastest lap was faster than Randy's lap. And normally, I don't look at fastest lap. I you know, I always look at. I'll go back through the data after the race and look. Did at, anyone ever at any point have a clean lap? No. You can't. There's too much traffic. Yeah, I don't think I ever had a full clean lap. And so, really, what I do, what I do is I look at all of our laps for each of us for a segment, and then I throw out anything that had a full course yellow or just ten or fifteen seconds over mm -hmm. um, the sort of normal time, and then I average what's left. And typically, Randy's oh, and somewhere between one point five and one point nine seconds per lap on average faster than I am. This time, I beat that asshole on one lap. My fastest lap was seven tenths of a second faster than his, and I'm sure it was a fluke and I'm sure he never got to run that clean and I don't care okay. because I beat an SCCA Hall of Fame race car driver around Sonoma and I'm um, sticking to that story. Okay, congratulations <laughs> on you. your victory. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Randy. I hope he doesn't listen to this, huh? <laughs> um, we went down a very deep rabbit hole just now. Weren't we talking about tires, yeah. sizes? So I'm there's sorry, size um, and then obviously there's category. So Tire Rack does a really good job of, of splitting these tires up based on, there's no like, I am a ultra high performance tire. Um, there's no one measure and it's not a self-certification program or something, but based on a tire's um, construction type and um, tread design and of course compound, there are different categories of tires. Um, and so Tire Rack will break them up. And we're not sponsored by Tire Rack or anything. I've just used them to buy every tire I've ever bought for my whole life. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh. You don't? No, I buy them from the cheapest place. <laughs> Which is Tire Rack. Uh, Costco's cheaper. Costco often uh, does a buy three, get one free, okay. but Costco is draconian about deviating from factory size. If, you, if you're not putting tires on the car that are exactly matching mm. the sticker and the door jam, they're like, we won't do that. Mm. And then they like get really draconian and like, you know, if you heaven forbid you have the wrong size wheel on your car and therefore you can't put the right size tire, like I've literally had to be like, I know what I'm doing. I've run the math. Here is here all of it is. Just put the fucking tires on the car that I bought from you. Is that really worth the ten dollars you saved over? Tire Rack? Uh, it'll save you like hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I just go look. I go to tirerack.com. I enter the tire size that I want. I select it. I have it delivered either to my house or straight to my tire shop, and I drop the wheels off and say mount these, and then I pick them up and we're done. Uh, I have also for some of like the weird vintage tires, for example, like the Daimler double six that had these weird Pirelli, they weren't weird. They were uh, Chinterado CN 12s. If I remember correctly, uh, there's a great place in the UK called Longstone mm -hmm. tire and they get the tires to you in like four days and they have a lot of weird vintage tires. That's mm -hmm. where I got the tires for the Citroen also. So if you need like vintage tires, tire, tire rack's not going to have like, 
True. CN 36s or CN 12s or XWXs. They also so did they not have 155 65 SR 13s, which was the front tires, or 165 60 SR 14s, which are the rear tires on the, on the beat. beat. Yeah. So I did buy those from two different people in on eBay, but yeah. I got Petlas. Hold on. Petlas is the name of the tire. Apparently they're Turkish. Uh, oh, it was like some fabulous name, like Petlas Fabuloso or Jet. Splendid, splendid, something like that name. Um, but I bought those on eBay. Everything else comes from Tyre. Mm. Um, but anyway, you you pick your your performance category based on like you do not run summer tires in, in the winter. You do not run them below fifty Fahrenheit ten Celsius. They are not safe for use there. Um, and it gets even worse when it's cold and wet. Um, and then four S's do pretty decently in the in the high forties. Yeah, they're totally fine in the in the high forties. I mean. Those are kind of the exception, but they do like the first couple turns I make in the e-golf when it's cold, they're definitely at a uh, reduced amount of grip. And then if it's, when it's raining in the Bay area, it's always in the fifties. It's always somewhere between 48 and 55 degrees. And uh, <laughs> uh, when the tires are cold and it's raining and it's cold outside, holy shit. Um, I but, did that with cup twos once. Cup, that, fuck, fuck cup twos. Yeah, that scared the absolute piss out of me isn't that what happened to your your gt3 uh, without you driving oh yes cup twos no thanks yeah i will not have them yep. um so they are they're so aggressive that when they break the way they break away is like you've hit an ice patch mm -hmm. um especially in the in if there's any water anywhere to be found in the next neighborhood no yes um um but then there are there's treadwear rating which is uh, non certified sort of standardized thing mm -hmm. so the idea there is a base the base rating is 100 and so if a tire gets a rating of 150 it should should wear 150 percent better or 50 percent better than the 100 so if the 100 treadwear tire lasted you 10,000 miles you should get 15,000 miles out of the 150 in practice it doesn't work that way um, 200 is a very sticky tire well 200 is a tire that wears out quickly yes it doesn't necessarily have to be sticky yes that's so true. one of the, the ways that we've all started to categorize tires into these max performance summer ultra high performance high performance all this other stuff is tread wear because typically the more aggressive a tire is the faster it will wear but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way again in the sake but if the baseline is 100 then that's a very very sticky or well, very was, because it was slow wearing it, fast wearing sorry came out years and years and years ago and so uh -huh. tires have gotten better and better and better at wear i mean there was a what the hell was that tire that was on the dodge viper acr that oh this was kind of a cheater tire had a tread yeah. wear rating of 20 20 Really? They called it 120, but the tires that we drove at Motor Trends had 20 on them. I've seen 20. I've seen 60. Trofeo R's yeah. or 60, I think. And Pirelli's fall apart. We, You were there for um, filming Dark Horse. Dark Horse, yeah. And uh, the one of the rears just packed up and we departed a, pretty spectacularly. Man. And also look at the Lucid. Mm -hmm. Same exact failure. Uh, and the That's Sapphire. a Pirelli no, special. You know, I, I hate to shit on any company, broadly speaking, but, uh, you know, I said I never met a Pirelli I liked. W when we're filming, we do things to tires that just don't happen in, in the real world. We're just so hard on them. Yep. Um, and what's, what we, Anthony and I will look at the tires that are on the car and make a decision. If it's Michelin's, we're not worried. The, uh, like a, any set of Michelin's will make it through an entire, entire shoot. We will ask for backup tires just in case we get a flat. Um, but that's kind of it. If there are Pirellis in the tire on on the car, not only do we get a backup set, but then we say no burnouts, no slides. And if you watch the Dark Horse video that should have made a couple uh, debut a couple days ago, I never got sideways. And all the action sequences, I'm in the Dark Horse, and Randy Popst is in the BMW M4, and he was hooning sideways, crazy tire smoke all over the place. We never thought about it, we never worried about it, but the uh, Mustang had. Pirelli's on it and I, we said no fuckery at all and we ran the we got the lap time out of them when they were brand new um we did just normal sort of dynamic filming with no sliding and then I did one e-brake uh slide at in first gear so I don't know 26 miles an hour did a 180 e-brake Randy flies by in the M4 I dumped the clutch in first and the tire exploded 
And we were like, oh, fuck. Like, we only have one spare set of rears, and now I've just destroyed in one take. And I don't know if you guys know this, but it takes a lot of takes to do some of these action sequences. We were genuinely concerned that we wouldn't make it through. Um, and that's Pirelli's. Every time we have a Pirelli, that happens. Con Continentals are almost as bad. Um, Bridgestones are quite a bit better. But when I see that, I can make it through three days of filming on a set of PS4Ss or all seasons or whatever. We do horrible shit and they just wear perfectly down to the wear bars and go away versus other tires that delaminate, chunks are missing, they fall apart, they blow up. I have to think that in the real world, I would much rather be in those Michelins. Michelin apparently has quite a bit bigger development budget than anybody else. Like maybe twice as much as the next closest competitor is what I've heard. Or I've no possibly even more than that. I've heard yeah. other tire companies say that their their development budget is basically bigger than everyone else's combined. Mm. Um, and I, I'm it sure that was- to be borne out in the way the products behave. They just last forever. It's yeah. amazing. Um, you know, I will, look, I'll give credit to, to, um, to Bridgestone on that 71 RS. Like they dealt with two days of racing. Um, or each set of tires dealt with a full day of racing. The front left on our car was worn out by the end of the race, but the other three were easily usable again. Um, but that is wearing more quickly than some of the other three and 400 tread wear tires that people use. Um, but nothing beats a Michelin. My mm. God, my God. I mean, if we could get like, on, if we get PS4Ss on that race car, I don't think it would have outgripped the, Pirellis, but they would last for like three seasons. Yes. <laughs> He's so awesome. How They'll old are your tires? Out. 2017. Oh, they've been sitting? No. <laughs> We've been using them Six continuously. a year, yeah. <laughs> They're totally fine. They look brand, brand new. Yep. Yeah. It's the Michelin um, way. That's why I would always put Michelins on things if I could, but there's just, you know, for some of these weird applications, especially for old cars, that okay. would be my one request to change the in the universe would be better vintage Michelin support. Michelin has uh, has had many PR people through the years and I've talked to different management and they keep shuffling management in the US. I don't know what is going on over there. Um, but they did have a big initiative to, to relaunch enthusiast sizes. Mm -hmm. And I just heard somebody else just did this. So, so Michelin just, does a good job of it with uh, their like 50s and 60s tires. You can get yeah. X's, radial X's, which is the original radial tire from the 50s, probably, or maybe even the late 40s, uh, and the XAS and the XVS and the XWX. All these like 50s and 60s tires are available, but there's a big gap that it happens after the like about 1980. Yeah. Michelin has been, uh, sorry, Pirelli has good vintage availability. Mm -hmm. The P7s are available now. And you know, the Countach tire, I guess that is a P7. Uh, and uh, who else has recently come out with an, uh, Yokohama A008 are mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what I put on my mom's 911 from the 80s. Uh, so it's nice to hear because yeah. some of the, most of my cars have really limited availability and if not none. And there was a point at which, so E30s are everywhere in the Bay Area still, but they're mostly gone throughout the rest of the country. Uh, their, ba their tire in the US was a, a 14 uh, and it was a 195 60 14. I, think. I don't remember what, what I never had 14s on any of my, um, yeah, well, I don't remember what size it was. Well, I think it was 195 60 14. Um, and there was at one point not a single tire available in that size. And I was complaining to uh, some Michelin people and some, the, some guys I know at Tire Rack, like, help. And they're like, there's no market for this. Think about how expensive it is to develop and manufacture a tire that instead of hundreds... Just leave the old one in production then. <sighs> yeah, but it's not... Take, so take that factory space from yeah, yeah. a tire that will sell 17 sets a year versus one that'll sell 250 sets a day. Yeah. I, I hate the economics of it, but it's that's the reality. But it has now emerged. I mean... We're getting there. Pirelli's done it, and so is Michelin and Yokohama. And Somebody just launched a, a line of like 80 series tires. Like there's, there were for a while there, so 185, 60, 14 is a very popular size for 80s cars because all of the original VW Mark I and Mark II stuff was that size. Miata was also that size, NA. Mm -hmm. um, and then also all the Civics of the day were 185, 60, 14. And so Honda stuff. And there was for a while there almost nothing. But Dunlop has Z3, which is their latest super high performance, or I think it's a max performance summer, mm -hmm. available in 185, 60, 14. Mm -hmm. And 
So of course I have it on the Scirocco. Um, and then the 15s, Fredestein had that Sprint Plus. For a while there, there was only one choice, which was DZ101, uh, which is a Dunlop, which was not a good tire. Um, and Yoko S-Drive, which was not a round tire. Um, <laughs> but a, a good, but I, not round. A good, but not round. And I've gone through so many sets of them and I'm just hoping somebody else will come out with a 205 55, 15. And so I know that this is now starting to be an emerging market where people are seeing, okay, these cars are now collectible enough. Well, in the same way that red lines were put back in production for all the muscle car guys and stuff like that yeah. hopefully the sort of enthusiast momentum will so because of what it was for a long time was a size of tire that was owned by people who were just like sort of suffering through an old car because right. they couldn't get anything better and now it's transitioned into enthusiasts who are buying these tires and so just like a bmw m3 costs the same thing as a, a seven series when they're both 10 years old because mm -hmm. in one case it's just depreciating the other one it retains its value because enthusiasts keep the values right. up the tires i think will do the same I hope so. We hope. I hope so because it was pretty pretty upsetting when I couldn't get a single tire for the for the beat. I'm like, oh, this is unbelievable. And there are strange sizes. Yes. But um, but you know, a normal car like I, somebody told me recently there was a, there was a period of time where you couldn't get a single tire for a Volkswagen Beetle, mm. which was I think 155 SR15s, um, 155 7015s or something. They, but they just wore, there was nothing available. Like, how the hell do you take the second most produced car in the history of the world yeah. and not have a single tire available? But the place? landscape's definitely changed. I remember this was true about the Miura. You had to put uh, TAs, the radial TAs mm -hmm. that you had on the 308. And then uh, Michelin, well, you Michelin's a workaround if you have nine-inch rear wheels, but you can actually get the correct size. They were $10,000 when they first <gasps> came out for a set of tires for a Miura SV. Oh but Pirelli started making them. This was, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Uh, have do, other topics on the subject of tires? Are we ready to? I mean, we probably could round it out. Do here. a whole episode on like U T O Q or the United the Unified oh. Tire Quality, whatever the, the the sort of ratings of temperature resistance and and water. So we like, didn't talk about speed ratings. We didn't either. talk about speed ratings either. Uh, I guess we're gonna have to do that for another episode because it's Christmas Day and it is we've done an hour already. My God, my condolences. Um, yeah, but I think we should take New Year's Eve off or New Year's Day off. I think is our next episode, as you wish. Um, do you want to do you want to come back here for New Year's Day and and do our year end wrap up, or do you want to save that for? Uh, um, the I've, first I'm week? sure I'm not deciding this now. Okay, so we'll either see you guys all next year or next year plus a week. Okay, I think is the way that that works. Yes, that's right. Um, to all of our loyal listeners and those of you who are not loyal and bastards because of it, happy holidays. Hope you're. Uh, New Year's celebration is is wonderful, and let's hope for more motoring in 2024. Yes. Uh, amen. What he said. I hear those. Just clap and get it over with. <laughs>